Okay, in this section we want to look at the stages of photosynthesis, which are light dependent reaction and then the Calvin cycle, or which is also known as carbon fixation reaction. Now primarily what we want to look at uh, in, this, in this video is light dependent reaction. So notice this uh, diagram. This diagram is a summary of the entire process of photosynthesis. So here you have your two stages. You've got your light dependent reaction and then we have carbon fixation process which occurs in the Calvin cycle. So this occurs as part of Calvin cycle. Now, where does this occur? Well, light dependent reaction occurs in the thylakoid. The thylakoid are these flattened membranes. The uh, Calvin cycle is going to take place here in the stroma. The stroma is a fluid within the chloroplast. Now, the light dependent reaction is a part of this that is going to actually absorb the light energy. That's what this little symbol right here represents. Okay, and then recall from the overall reaction, we have two materials feed, that are feeding into um, photosynthesis. We have water and carbon dioxide. So, water feeds in right here. It feeds into the light dependent reaction. That water is going to be split, and the oxygen from that water is not used anywhere else in photosynthesis. So, that oxygen is going to be given off as atmospheric oxygen. Okay, so all the oxygen coming off of photosynthesis comes from water, just like all the oxygen taken in for respiration ends up in water. Okay, over here in the Calvin cycle, this is where we're going to have the intake of carbon dioxide and then we're going to have the production of carbohydrates. Okay, linking these two stages, the light dependent reaction and the Calvin cycle, we've got the ADP ATP cycle. So notice here that the uh, ADP picks up energy from the light energy to uh, attack on that third phosphate and forms ATP. Then ATP is going to provide the energy to drive the Calvin cycle. Down here, we have our hydrogen carrier, NADP, and NADP is going to pick up a hydrogen over here from the light dependent reaction. That hydrogen comes from right here, from water. So, I'm going to transport the hydrogen over here, drop that off on the Calvin cycle, and that hydrogen ultimately becomes part of the hydrogens in these carbo, uh, carbohydrates. So again, this diagram on the test is going to look like this. Okay? And it's going to be set up as matching. Okay, the, uh, in the light dependent reaction, uh, the light dependent reaction is the photo part of photosynthesis, meaning that's the part that actually absorbs the light energy. Uh, this occurs in the thylakoid and chlorophyll and the accessory pigments, which would be chlorophyll B and the uh, carotenoids, are grouped into what are called photosystems that are embedded in the uh, thylakoid membrane. Now, this diagram represents the, uh, the photosystem. And, of course, the photosystem is the part that's going to absorb the light energy. This is a uh, set of highly organized pigments that are embedded in the thylakoid membrane. And as these pigments absorb light energy, that energy is going to be transferred to one area called a reaction center. And in this reaction center, the electrons gain more and more energy until they boost not only to a higher orbit, but they boost completely out of their orbit. That allows them to be picked up by an electron acceptor, which takes these high energy electrons down a metabolic pathway that ultimately leads to the production of carbohydrates. Now here is a more detailed version of what's going on in uh, this process of the light dependent reaction. So you have two photosystems. Again, these are pigments that are embedded in the thylakoid membranes. These are going to absorb the light energy. 
that energy is transferred to a couple of electrons in the reaction center. Those electrons are boosted out of their orbits and picked up by an electron acceptor, both here from photosystem 2 and here from photosystem 1. Now, from that electron acceptor, these electrons are passed down an electron transport chain, just like we had in respiration. As the electrons are passed along that electron transport chain, they are going to drive the process of chemiosmosis and produce ATP. Okay, over here we have the electrons passed along an electron transport chain. And then at the end of that chain, the substance NADP acts as the electron acceptor. After this picks up the electrons, it picks up hydrogen ions. Of course, remember both the electrons and the hydrogen ions originated from the water over here and that forms hydrogen atoms. Now then, the uh, hydrogen atoms and the ATP will feed into the next set of uh, reactions called the Calvin cycle. Let's go back to our water right here. Uh, we left some, we left this uh, uh, with a deficit of a couple of electrons right here. So one of the first things that will happen is that water will be split in a process called photolysis and the uh, oxygen from that water is not used anywhere else in photosynthesis so the oxygen is given off as atmospheric oxygen. Now the hydrogen is split into its hydrogen ions and the electrons. The electrons replacing mis missing electrons here in the photosystem and then, um, and then the uh, electrons that have been passed through this photosystem and the hydrogen ions are picked up over here to form the hydrogen that would feed into the next set of reactions. Okay, this part about the photosystems just tells you that these photosystems are not just randomly structured, they are highly organized, they are light absorbing structures and composed of chlorophyll, carotenoids, and proteins all located within the thylakoid and you have two photosystems. So in reading through this in your notes, refer back to this diagram right here. Okay, as we go on through this, again, refer back to your uh, diagram as you're reading through this. It'll make a lot more sense that way. Um, same way, going all the way down through here with all these details. If you'll just look at, read that material and look at the diagram and understand where it comes into play there, then that'll be a lot easier than just trying to read this material. Um, notice in red we have the term photolysis. Photolysis is the splitting of water in photosynthesis. And when that water splits, it's going to yield two electrons, two hydrogen ions, and an oxygen atom. The uh, electrons and the hydrogen ions are used in this process of photosynthesis. The oxygen is not used in the process of photosynthesis and it becomes atmospheric oxygen. Okay, again, go on, there's more details about the uh, process and as I keep saying, refer back to that diagram. Now here's a summary of this process and again in looking at the summary, refer back to this diagram. What is going to be used is light energy, water, ADP and phosphate, and then NADP. What's going to be produced by the light dependent reaction is the oxygen from uh, water, ATP, NADPH, with the hydrogens from the water. So again, here's your overall diagram showing the uh, light dependent reaction. Okay, what this diagram is showing is the idea that those hydrogen ions are going to accumulate inside the thylakoid membrane. And then that will set up a gradient. Those hydrogen ions will come flowing out through that through ATP synthase in this membrane and drive this process of chemiosmosis. So Here's a diagram showing the electron transport chain and ATP synthase in the, uh, in the thylakoid membrane. So notice what we're going to have here. We have 
photosystem 2 and photosystem 1, these groups of pigments that absorb the light energy and then those electrons are passed along as those electrons are passed along we're going to get this pumping of hydrogen ions into the thylakoid lumen um, as uh, just as in respiration we're going to have ATP synthase and these hydrogen ions will come flowing through the ATP synthase and do something very unusual to set up a mechanical rotation and then the energy from that mechanical rotation will be transferred over here to tack that third phosphate onto ATP. Now associated with re uh, photosynthesis we have the term photophosphorylation. That is where ATP production uh, by means of an electron transport chain is powered by light energy instead of uh, what we had in respiration. In respiration we had oxidative phosphorylation where the ATP uh, the ATPs were produced by means of an electron transport chain that was powered by the oxidation of NADH and FADH. Okay, now we want to look briefly at cyclic versus non-cyclic electron transport and non-cyclic electron transport is involved in the, photos in the form of photosynthesis that we have just looked at. Non-cyclic electron transport is by far the most common form of photosynthesis. Cyclic electron transport is going to use uh, light to generate ATP just like non-cyclic electron transport does but cyclic electron transport does not split water, it does not produce oxygen and it does not produce carbohydrates or any other long-term storage material. So cyclic electron transport is not an important component of photosynthesis in plants but it may have been an important component in ancient photosynthetic bacteria and is seen in some modern photosynthetic bacteria. Okay, let's go back up and look at this diagram just briefly. This is non-cyclic electron transport where the electrons the electrons are boosted up here, picked up by an electron acceptor, passed down an electron transport chain, again boosted up in their energy level and again passing down an electron transport chain ultimately to an electron acceptor. Okay. Now with, uh, with cyclic electron transport what's going to happen is we're going to we're going to get the uh, electron boosted up it's going to pass down an electron transport chain and then it's going to return back to that same photosystem so it forms a cycle. In doing this, this is going to form ATP.